Here's a question that was sent to me. The individual wanted to know if they could somehow do something different to create more storage in a large building. I believe the building size that he sent was a block wall building and it was 25 foot wide and about 50 foot long, big building. Normally what you would do if you want to create some type of a storage system or a floor in a large roof like that, you would actually need to install some beams with some posts somewhere. So you'd need a post and beam system. And uh, if you don't want to do that, then um, your only option might be to somehow change the building and create some type of an engineered roof truss. And to do that, you might need to contact a roof truss manufacturer not a engineer, a structural engineer. The individual actually said that they contacted an, an engineer and he recommended to remove the roof and redo it. This might be uh, another option. You know, just it all depends. You know, I understand most people want to do something and they don't have the money to do it or they want to do it. Um, they're not going to contact an engineer anyway. And uh, if that's the case, then you might want to try some of the ideas that I have in the video, even though I do not recommend that. I can't recommend doing something without uh, an engineer. Any modifications to a building require an engineer. Now what we have here is a plywood gusset, let's say, plywood piece of plywood that is used to connect these pieces together. Now you can see here that there is there are two separate pieces reason for that and this is a case in a lot of uh, places i've noticed around the world where i live in southern california there is a lumber yard that will sell you lengths of lumber up to 30 foot long and if you're not in that area or your your lumber yard doesn't have that then uh, you're going to have to use shorter pieces and these shorter pieces um, need to be connected and supported with some something like this so you are going to need to have a support board, let's say, that is connected to the rafter somehow for the rafter tie. Remember, these are not floor joists. They are not meant to support loads, um, even though people use them for that all the time. This vertical support is meant to hold up the collar or the rafter ties. And these rafter ties should be connected. They should have, um, I would imagine if you have something like this, it'd be nice to have at least a 24 inch strap connecting them together, not just a small piece of plywood. If you have some plywood and it's uh, 24 inches long and uh, it's nailed on both sides, you got a piece of plywood, a plywood gusset on each side, that might be enough. But remember, you can't have these separate, otherwise they wouldn't be doing their job as rafter ties. And I'm showing you how the support board would be connected. Keep in mind that this is off-centered. This is not in the center. So the brakes where I had the brake um, for the uh, rafter ties would not be in the center. So this board right here is going to be a little smaller than this one. And I hope that makes sense. Now this is the design that the individual actually had. It had plywood gussets on each side nailed to the um, webbing, let's say. The only thing I didn't see was whether or not the he had full-length lumber or the lumber was uh, supported with the plywood and actually uh, had a break in it like this one here. Uh, see how it's connected. Here we have these two, the rafters. These, remember the ceiling joists are nailed, I don't know if you can see that. The ceiling joists are nailed to the rafters, allowing these boards to actually be off-centered to where they can be fastened to the rafters with uh, nails. Okay, and again, this is just two types of buildings I showed you for this and you can see where you're not going to get a lot of attic storage out of something like this. I say that, but you could have you could have it here. 
um, just wouldn't have uh, something you could walk down the center, which is what this individual wanted. Here's one of the ideas that I came up with after typing in the words attic roof truss, A-T-T-I-C, attic roof truss. It gave me some type of a engineered roof truss that looks something like this. Um, so I went ahead and ran a board across it here. Let's say we've got a two by six on the bottom. Remember this has a break here, two separate boards. This solid board will help to make this one stronger. And if this one's stronger, this is going to actually create a little more support for the roof. Or I should say hopefully would. Here's the webbing again with the gusset. Another view of it there from the back side. You can see here where these are sitting on top of the uh, vertical board that we're using as a stiffener. Whether or not this board would be fine if you stopped it here and ran these down to the original uh, rafter tie would uh, would kind of be up to you. I think this would actually work better because you're running this a little bit longer, making the support board a little longer. Um, I just kind of threw this in there. This would be a collar tie. You might want to put it up against the ridge, nail it to the rafters, and then you could always use a some type of a framing anchor to fasten it to the truss, I mean to the roof ridge if you wanted. But that's something that would give you a lot of storage area uh, if it's possible again. Here are a few more methods you could use. Um, this would be a full length rafter tie or ceiling joist, floor joist, I guess. Um, and you can see that at one side it's square. Just kind of figures out what's going to work. And uh, this one here is actually shaped to fit. Now you might need to actually remove these shingles um, in the lower section of the, a, your building and remove some of the sheathing to slide these parts in from the outside if you can't get them in from the inside. A uh, full length piece of, of plywood, this might be helpful. And again, just throwing some different stuff out there. A truss plate, these can usually be picked up at your local home improvement centers or lumber yards framing anchors to add a little more strength. Two mending plates, a strap. You could always strap this stuff together. Strap instead of plywood. You could always use straps for the rafter ties and the ceiling joist or the floor joist, whatever we want to call them. Here's a strap. We took the um, webbing and moved it to the other side put a strap here and then bolted it to the ceiling joist. And here you can see this is actually connecting these two together also. You can actually move this over and connect all three of these together if that would work. Another framing anchor, just kind of throwing it out there, a different position you could uh, put it in. Got to get creative. Now that is pretty much it for the video. Keep in mind, these are only suggestions for those who are not going to contact an engineer. Maybe this would work. Um, but uh, if, if an engineer doesn't want anything to do with it, and I understand that. I've contacted engineers myself, and they didn't want anything to do with it. The jobs were too small. And, and I understand their position on it. It's, you know, for them to come out and do something, it might be $700. And you're like, God, that's a lot of money to pay for this. But... Uh, in reality, it might not be this amount of time that they spend on the project. And uh, they're actually saving you the frustration by telling you they're not interested. And uh, you just might need to contact an engineer who is, or like I said, contact a roof truss manufacturer. See what they have to say. They might be able to provide you with a simpler solution than what I have in this video.